I have the new Moon Swatch in hand from Omega and Swatch. It's a co-branded Moon Swatch done in bioceramic that was just released. I had a friend who had some airline miles to use, so he flew out to San Francisco, stood in line for, I think, 17 hours and bought the Mission to the Moon variation. I think there's 11 different colorways. And needless to say, it's a very divisive release that is inciting some hate and some love you know, in the watch enthusiast community, some drama for sure. And uh, I've had fun looking at the different memes and whatnot on social media. But in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about this release and answer some common questions that are being bandied about. But just bear in mind, these are my opinions. And I uh, really enjoy Omega. I have owned multiple generations of the Speedmaster. And I'm also a fan of Swatch. So I'm going to try to be balanced here and not be biased one way or the other, which seems to be the case with most of us. You know, it's again, it's a divisive release. But the first question, uh, let me reference my notes. Is this a real Speedmaster? Is this a real Speedmaster? It's a $260 Omega Swatch co-branded product called the Moon Swatch. Is this a Speedmaster? And the answer is yes, absolutely. This is a Speedmaster. You go in on the dial, you take a look at the, uh, not just the likeness, the detail work, the colors and everything, but you see Speedmaster proud, you know, displayed on the dial in the correct font. You zoom out, you take a look at the Velcro synthetic strap. You can see a very large Speedmaster signature. So yeah, absolutely. This is being marketed as a Speedmaster, it's almost exact when it comes to the proportions and the dimensions of the Speedmaster Professional, or even if you go up and buy a precious metal variation, it's going to be exactly the same or very close to uh, the exact dimensions, proportions, heights, and all of that stuff. So yes, this is a Speedmaster, and it's just a little wild to think that you can spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on a precious metal variation. You can go with a stainless steel variation that carries a meta certified uh, movement, a coaxial movement, but you can also only spend $260 and get a bioceramic variation in a host of different colors. Uh, I like that that spectrum on the price scale there. I like all the different options as a consumer, as a watch enthusiast. Now, the next question is, does this watch devalue the Speedmaster? Say you spent six grand and you got a Meta certified moon watch and you enjoy posting it every Tuesday on social media. And now there is a frenzy of uh, watch enthusiasts that are posting their uh, Swatch Omega co-branded moon swatches that they spent, you know, if they were able to get one, $260 plus tax. Is this type of release devaluing that luxury product? You know, if you think about Omega's history, a few names come to mind, but I think the Speedmaster would be the most iconic that carries the coolest and baddest history from that brand. It's a model that they have made for decades and they will continue to make for decades. Is this plastic or ceramic and oil compound variation? Is this affordable variation, this quartz version? Is it devaluing the Speedmaster name and legacy? And again, this is my opinion, but no, I don't think it devalues it at all. I did laugh at some of those memes and, and social media posts that have been floating around, but I think people that are genuinely offended by this watch, I think you'd take the hobby a little bit too seriously. I think um, <laughs> it's just a watch, guys. Uh, no, I, I don't think it devalues the moon watch. In fact, as I was talking to my friend Dan, who was in line waiting for all those hours to purchase this watch, uh, he was wearing his Aquaterra. The guy next to him was wearing a gold variation of the Speedmaster. So um, I think there are Omega owners and and uh, and fans of the Speedmaster that are super excited about this release and are not offended or miffed or hurt about this new release. So I don't think it devalues the Speedmaster, but I don't know. At the same time, I can see some of the counter argument if Swatch were to you know, start doing 
inexpensive variations of the Seamaster and Planet Ocean and Aquaterra and Globemaster. It's like, well, in that instance, yeah, you're devaluing almost everything from uh, from your bigger brother Omega. But in this instance, uh, I don't think so. Not at all. Now, continuing here, what is the quality level? Is this close to Omega? Does this scratch the itch for a luxury priced Speedmaster? And in my experience, no, this is not close to Omega level. This is on par with other Swatch products at the same price segment. It's dang cool. It's colorful. It's fun. It carries an inexpensive quartz movement. I believe it's a variation of the G10-212 that doesn't have the date, uh, carries four jewels in the gear train. Um, but the devil is in the details. You know, it's not the fact that this is super light or the strap is super stiff. It comes down to, you know, the printing. It comes down to, um, I mean, even, even the alignment of the hands. This is pretty bad, <laughs> pretty bad. Even for a $250 watch, uh, the alignment here on the, on the chronograph hand is, is very bad. Uh, but, you know, you look at some of these things like the uh, tachymeter indexing on the bezel. And I can't tell if that's just printed on the bioceramic or if that's a sticker. It's not an insert. I can say that. Uh, when you handle this, when you look at the proportions, it's close uh, in terms of overall design and everything. But uh, the devil is in the detail work. This does feel like a $300 swatch and not a $6,000 Speedmaster, if that makes sense. But that's not taking away from this. This is a very affordable, bold, and fun release that I find has merit and has place within our watch market. Now, the next question, is this a limited edition? And fortunately, the answer is no, it's not a limited edition. But at the time of recording this video, it's not very available. It was only for sale, one per customer, at select Swatch stores around the world. And so, I mean, there are probably, I don't want to speculate, but most stores from the reports that I saw only got between 75 and 250 units, and that is all the colors. And they sold out, you know, just very shortly after opening the stores on the 26th. So there are not a lot out there. And Swatch, hopefully, is uh, really pumping out more in the production and the assembly line. And I hope that they are available online at some future points, um, but they, I, I don't, I haven't seen anything that is specifically said that it will be online at a future point, just that they're working on making more and they will be available at a later date and that no, it is not a limited edition. Now, the next question is a good one. Uh, did the Swatch Group botch this release? I would say yes and no. Uh, no in the fact that you know, what have we all been talking about the past few days? Every YouTube channel, every watch forum. Every, I went to a watch enthusiast meetup here locally and we were all talking about the moon swatch. So did they botch the release in terms of getting uh, attention and getting screen time, being on the minds and lips of watch enthusiasts? No, not at all. In fact, they, they hit a home run in that regard. But at the same time, I think it was woefully short-sighted to expect to do a sub $300 moon swatch in bioceramic and not produce a ton of them and only make them available at select boutiques. So there was this rabid frenzy that was dangerous. Like London had to close the store down for safety. I mean, I don't know. There might be some legalities involved in the future, but I, I think... <sighs> Yes and no. It was botched, but at the same time, it was a brilliant idea. It just wasn't executed to the best degree, if that makes sense. Now continuing, are current Speedy owners buying this watch? I've talked to several that yes, they are, and they're planning on buying multiple of these moon swatches in the favorite color iterations that they have. And my favorite versions, I'd have to say Mission to Mars. I really like Mars. I really like the sun. I really like... Uh, Neptune and and then I think Jupiter would be uh, the next one that I like in that order. I love the bold variations, uh, the very colorful versions. And I have owned multiple Speedmaster generations in the past. And I do plan on buying some myself 
once they become readily available. And hopefully that happens within the next couple months online, but we'll see if that comes to fruition. Now, the next question is, is this more of an Omega watch or more of a Swatch feeling watch? And I kind of touched on this earlier, but, uh, I would say this feels more like a swatch in terms of being light, of being colorful, of being bold, of carrying the quartz movement, and uh, and less feeling like a luxury priced uh, Omega level product. So I think this is more swatch than it is Omega, uh, but I think it's awesome at the same time. Now, the last question here, (laughs) is this a good move? Or is this a bad move by the Swatch Group? And again, my opinion, I think this is an excellent move. As I was talking to my friend Dan, who bought this, who waited in line in San Francisco, he said that he would estimate maybe 15, maybe 20% of the people in line were just classic watch enthusiasts. They were talking about hodinky and and different words that kind of uh, out you as a watch enthusiast. And then he said most of the people in line that he was talking to, uh, they just thought it was cool. They heard about it and they wanted to get a Speedmaster at the affordable segment. And to them, spending $260 or $300 with tax on a watch, that was a significant purchase. So I think I think the Swatch Group has done great in reaching out not only to watch enthusiasts, but getting a whole segment of people interested in watches that maybe one day buy Omega level or they buy, you know, a glass Huta original, or they go up to Hamilton or a Tissot, or they stay with swatch, but they're into not tech. They're not wearing an Apple watch or a smart watch. They're into wearing a traditional watch, albeit a quartz, but done in fun bioceramic. I think this is a good entry into the hobby that we share. And so I think this is an excellent release. And I think they're going to do very well with these provided they can produce them and they can keep the quality up and not, you know, not have issues with trying to mass produce a whole bunch in a short amount of time. So as long as the Swatch Group makes a ton more of these and makes it available online and it doesn't become this limited uh, edition type of situation or limited production situation, I think this is going to be a very excellent release with most watch enthusiasts, maybe wanting one or two to have in their watch collection. So those are my thoughts, guys. Tell me what you think. Thank you for watching today. Have a great day and uh, see you next time.